after doing the numerical for the distinct real root case where n was positive for the market model with price expectations we can also do it with a case where we have complex roots so let's start with this example which is on page number 531 of um, alpha c chiang's book on mathematical economics these are the demand supply functions you can refer to the last video to see that how we compare and extract the values here it is done and also we are given two initial conditions that we can use to definitize these solutions so extracting these values is something we have done before in the last video as well so we are going to jump over it and I expect that you can do it and the consequence would be that we'll be getting these values M will be there N will be there and you know M and M they have very uh, high significance when it comes to the judgment of the uh, nature of the roots and the dynamic stability so we start with n usually and we see that it is negative um, it should be less than 0 so it is negative and m is also negative from this uh, point we can already guess that the dynamic stability will be present because if both of m and n are negative it leads to dynamic stability however we will do this um, numerically as well so um, when n is negative all three possible cases can be there that is distinct real root case and repeated real root case and complex root case so either of these can happen and then if m is negative it means that the dynamic stability will be present keeping these um, um, you know expectations in our mind we can now check the nature of roots for which we do this discriminant test and um, the value of a1 is here the value of a1 a2 is here this would be a2 so we are putting these values and value of m and value of n beta delta and n they are all substituted so this is 16 on the left hand side and the right hand side we have 20 so this shows that we have a complex root case complex root case is uh, written in this conjugate form we can understand the value of h and we can understand the value of v here uh, we have extracted these values the simplification is something that I expect you can handle easily so this is a DIY for you and this is R1 and R2 this is H plus minus VI and the value of H is minus 1 the value of V is 2 so we have these two crucial values that we can use to put in the general solution which will allow us to have the uh, answers uh, of the time path in this case this certain answer and this is the uh, particular integral which is 9 which shows a static equilibrium and finally we have this um, time path which is general in nature so we definitely want to definitize it and for that what we can do is we can put t is equal to 0 wherever we can see t so here there was t and so was here and here as well as here so we know the value of p naught which is given which is 12 and here you can see it becomes cos 0 sin 0 and the purpose of using this formula of trigonometric ratios is to see that how the, uh, it can benefit us and by making the calculation simple because we know cos 0 is 1 and sin 0 is 0 so the answer is reduced to this form in which one of the arbit arbitrary constants a5 is evaluated whereas a6 is yet to be evaluated so straight away we have found the value of one of the arbitrary constants now the general solution for introducing p bar naught is to be found we can take the derivative of p t to get p bar t and that will allow us to get p bar naught the value of which is given so following this uh, pr process we are going to differentiate p t now this uh, seems a little lengthy because 
it has some uh, lengthy functions but still we can uh, handle it let us see how so this was the function that was given broadly speaking it has this term and that term and this is also one term the derivative of which will be zero here you can see so it is not a problem for us however this function is a significant part of the analysis uh, we are going to solve it by uh, multiplying this function inside when we multiply it with this term it becomes this so we call it hx and we call it gx here e, uh, my, uh, e exponent of minus t gets multiplied with this term so it becomes this expression in which hx and then uh, it should be ht actually all of these x's should be t but in general form we usually have x so uh, it should not be a problem I, if it is written in terms of x it means that it is representing the general form but if we write in terms of t it means that we are referring to the current situation where t is the independent variable instead of x so this is the other term after multiplication again this can become the first function you may call it hx or ht depending upon your context and this can be called as gx or gt here again the product rule can be applied because two functions are being multiplied and again here there are two functions being multiplied so we take the product of these product rule will be applied so the first uh, product rule will be here this is the first product rule the derivative of the first term the other term as it is the derivative of the second term and the first term as it is and then this term is expanded this was the first one and now we are talking about this one the derivative of the first term the second one as it is the derivative of the second term the first one as it is now this is uh, the process of simplification that you have been doing since uh, your school this is p bar t uh, the calculations are done here you can pause the video and see if the calculations are correct but broadly speaking this was the first product rule that we applied and this is the second product rule that we have applied the initial condition can be introduced now by putting t is equal to 0 as you can see all of these places that I am encircling are having t and that is also they are replaced with uh, we are bringing in 0 instead because of the initial condition now it is easy to solve this uh, lengthy looking uh, situation because um, this will become 1 uh, cos 0 uh, will be simplified to this term and further it will be equal to 1 and then sine 0 will be there and sine 0 is equal to 0 so you can pause the video and see that how all of these terms are getting simplified and uh, cos 0 is equal to 1 is now substituted here and this uh, sine 0 is equal to 0 is substituted here I'm only highlighting a few of these so that uh, you get the idea of what we are trying to do here and definitely other terms are also there that also need some simplification and it is done here for example this term and that term so we will uh, see that how uh, we can do this uh, they are actually representing this situation and this set of variables so I don't want to make it more complicated by highlighting all of these but you can solve it easily because the solution is in front of you in all the possible details um, after simplifying this we get this expression which we have these terms and we can get rid of these zeros to let us have this term this actually is an equation in terms of a5 and a6 previously we have found the value of a5 here it is equal to 3 so we can use this uh, value to find the value of a6 which is uh, can which can be found from this equation that we have just found so a5 is being substituted here and definitely we can get the value of a6 which will be equal to uh, 2 so now we have a5 as well as a6 their values are substituted here 
and 9 is the static equilibrium this is um, the exponential part this is the uh, trigonometric part of the uh, complementary function now we should try to make sense of it you should know that whenever we have uh, sine theta and cos theta that is the trigonometric trigonometric ratios the graph is like a wave and uh, if we have an exponential term with a negative exponent it is exponential decay or it will have a dampening effect on the product that is the wave the wave will dampen for example if it is like this it should get mitigated and equilibrium is there to to be achieved so uh, in this uh, example n was negative as well as m so um, we had a possibility of any one of those cases out of which the complex root case appeared in this in certain numerical uh, economic application and the dynamic stability is present because both of them are negative and whenever it happens the dynamic stability occurs so we can visualize this by the help of the graph that is developed on the basis of this time path here uh, it is visible that we have a wave like motion let us zoom out a little bit to make it more understandable further so you can see that this wave is happening and it's quite a bit of uh, uh, you know altitude that we can see here if it is starting from here and just going to that point and then coming back still not visible in the graph and then it is now having lower amplitude this and uh, lower amplitude is getting um, lower and lower as we go ahead in time so it is likely to converge to the equilibrium which is um, a desired situation uh, in case of a time path so this case is actually representing a situation where we have dynamic stability and the dampening effect is happening to this wave like motion that is due to the trigonometric uh, ratios that we have uh, found in our time path so in this way we have conducted a numerical economic application of the second order differential equation where we are studying the market model with price expectations and we are able to solve it numerically for a complex root case and also we were able to find the uh, situation of the dynamic stability of it this completes the uh, series of videos on the market price with um, market model with price expectation thank you